If you are wondering how to continue to grow your business, even in that like slow photography off season, then this video is for you. Today we are breaking the top 10 list of everything that a photographer can do to not just survive, but actually thrive during a season where it's too cold, too hot, or too whatever to actually get out and shoot. But before we jump into that, we want to introduce ourselves. I'm Hunter. And I'm Sarah. And we're Hunter and Sarah Photography, a husband and wife professional wedding photography team. We're also educators, and our goal is to help photographers to build strong foundations in both their businesses and their personal lives so that they can run profitable and sustainable photography businesses. So if you are watching this video the week that it comes out, it is the middle of February. And where we live here in the mid-Atlantic of the U.S., this is the slow season for weddings and for portrait sessions because it's kind of cold and dreary and gray outside and that's not exactly when families and couples want their wedding or engagement photos of their family sessions photographed. Yeah. But that doesn't mean that we as full-time photographers just take four months off <laughs> leisurely. Uh, for us, winter is actually the time that we get to do all of the things that you have to do to run a business. But that maybe fall kind of to the wayside during mm -hmm. our busy shooting season. So this week we are pausing our current series, which is all about shooting in manual on your DSLR mirrorless camera so that we can share 10 things that any photographer to do to really keep their portrait or wedding photography business growing even during a slow season. So let's jump right in. The first way that you can spend some of your winter downtime is actually to look back over the prior year. And by the way, if you live in like a really warm place where winter is actually a great time to shoot, but the summers are dead because it's swelteringly hot, mm -hmm. then maybe the like year that you review will be from different months. So instead of January to December, it's like July to June. The important thing, and it really doesn't matter when your you year is, um, the important thing is really that you just spend some time looking back over the last 12 months in all areas of your business. And so, of course, you wanna look at your photography itself and how you grew as a shooter. You wanna look at you know your business numbers and how your finances did. But if you have time for a deeper dive, you can also analyze like your social media presence. You can look at your marketing avenues, your lead sources, um, how you spent your time as a full-time or part-time photographer, um, the effect of your website, you know, and so on and so forth. Then, once you have looked back, you can then use all of this information to begin to look forward and start setting goals for the coming year. And by the way, if thinking about analyzing data is extremely boring to you and you need help just looking back on the last year and setting goals for the coming year, you should check out our video from earlier this year all about reflecting on the past year and setting up goals for the coming year. Now, speaking of looking back and using that information to set future goals, one of the most important areas of your photography business to do this in is your pricing. Pricing your portrait and wedding photography services incorrectly almost always leads to one of two things, barely booking any jobs and stunting the growth of your business or booking way too many jobs and just completely burning yourself out. Now, hopefully if you're watching this video, you know by now that Sarah and I are all about helping photographers build businesses that are both profitable and sustainable. And basically it's impossible to do both of those things at the same time if you've priced your products and services incorrectly. So if you feel like now this slow season is the time to really invest some time and energy into improving your pricing, we have a workshop that is all about helping photographers find the perfect price point for them based on their skill level, the market they shoot in, and how busy they actually want to be. Yeah, and if you think that you mean you might need some help nailing your perfect price point, use that link above Hunter's head to learn more about our pricing workshop. But either way, the start of a new year is a great time to take a step back and take a hard look at your pricing structure. So our third task for your photography off season is to update your portfolio and your website with your brand, with your best and newest imagery. So way back in our series, 10 Free Marketing Tactics for Photographers, we taught you guys why an up-to-date portfolio is so important to a photography business and how you're really only as valuable to potential clients as your website and your portfolio show that you are. Yeah, your clients are investing in the photographer that you are going to be when you shoot their job. So if your website and your portfolio hasn't been updated in six months or a year, the potential clients are gonna see you as the photographer that you were six months ago, and we'd bet that you've grown a lot since then and will continue to grow. And of course, if you don't have even a basic portfolio or a beginner website yet, then this can be a great time during this slow season to build your first one. Now, platforms like Pixieset, which we have used for gallery hosting for years, are great at things like gallery hosting, but now they even do beginner websites and they do it really well and very affordably. So there's a link in the description where you can check out Pixieset as a gallery service and get a little extra storage or try them out for your first website. 
the next way that you can actually spend some time during this, so this slow season is by expanding your collection of lenses and flashes or upgrading your camera body. Or at the very least, you can spend this time doing the research so that as soon as that money starts to come in from this year's upcoming weddings and portrait sessions, you are ready to make those investments right away. You don't have to spend time in your busy season doing that research. And of course, what gear makes sense for you is gonna depend a lot on what you're shooting and where your business is. Because what a natural light portrait photographer needs to grow their list of gear is probably pretty simple, but what a wedding photographer needs, I mean, a wedding photographer needs a whole arsenal of camera gear at their disposable to be ready for basically any situation. Yeah. So, and if you need some guidance on what you should consider as your next lens or what camera body you should upgrade to, our very first video series was actually all about what we think are the camera bag essentials for any portrait or wedding photographer. And that link is here. On the other hand, if you are just getting ready to buy your first camera or maybe move from a starter camera to your first professional camera, we have a video breaking down DSLR versus mirrorless, crop sensor versus full frame, even Nikon versus Canon versus Sony, all of that in one video, as well as some pricing information to help you, you know, what might you expect to spend on buying one of these cameras brand new here in the US. And so the link to that video is also up here. Our fifth tip for spending your slow season is to begin working on your marketing strategy for the coming year. Just because your clients aren't interested in shooting right now doesn't mean that they aren't thinking about when they might want to start scheduling that family or their engagement session. And so if you already have a handful of marketing avenues that you pursue, you know, ways you invest your time and energy into drumming up new leads, then the off season is a great time to just spend a little bit more time doing those and hopefully turn up the volume on leads that are gonna come in to your website and to your inbox for later this year. But if you don't have any clue how to even start drumming up those leads, then check out that 10 free marketing tactics for photographers series that we mentioned earlier in this video. We cover everything from networking with other photographers to direct outreach methods, and even just like raking in reviews from past clients. So at least one of those methods is bound to be a good fit for you and your business. Now, the sixth way that you can spend some time, uh, some of this downtime is by improving your workflow. Now, if you don't have a consistent experience that every single one of your clients is brought through each and every time they interact with your business, then it's very likely that you are just creating a lot of unnecessary work for yourself, doing the same thing over and over again, or doing things differently every time and figuring it out as you go. Yeah, and while we really love using a client relationship like management or like CRM software like HoneyBook, it is possible to mm -hmm. have a client work workflow without paying for a fancy software. It's where most people begin, it's where we begin. And mm -hmm. it may be as simple as writing down step-by-step step what you want your clients to experience with you, mm -hmm. then writing up some templates for any part of that process that's repeatable, like the introductory emails or advice on picking like an engagement session location. And while we don't have any resources on workflow just yet, it is on our list of workshops that we hope to run at some point later this year. So stay tuned for that. But for now, just dive in and start thinking of what you would want a standard client experience to look like for your portrait sessions, your weddings, whatever types of jobs that you regularly shoot. Now, if you are like some of our photography students who don't like interacting with social media and posting their work, this is one thing that very, very easily falls to the wayside in the busy season, and yeah. the slower times are really great for catching up on that. So one of the things you could do is just post some of your photography from earlier this year to social media that maybe you never got around to posting, or maybe you can repost images from old sessions just to like keep your followers engaged through these slower, what is for us, the winter months. And if you do this right, by the time spring comes around and the weather's getting nice again, people are going to be so excited to message you left and right to basically have you take their photos. Yep. And if you need more advice on starting your social media pages, then this video above is the best place to start. On the other hand, if you already have a Facebook page and an Instagram for your photography business, then this video will actually help you turn more of your personal network into paying photography clients. So for the next one, if it's actually your photography itself or even just your confidence as a photographer and as a you know someone who directs clients on a session. If those are the areas that you feel like need to grow the most during this down season, then honestly, sometimes the very best thing you can do is just get out there and shoot. Yeah. We posted a video last year all about fighting imposter syndrome and growing your confidence as a photographer. But in that video, we also touched on 
all of the other benefits that you get from just getting out there and practicing your photography, especially for those who are new to their photography business. However, if you are like brand new to photography and you're still learning how to shoot in manual, then our series on shooting in manual is going to be the best place for you to start. And of course, these practice shoots don't need to be with paying clients. Beg your friends and your family, beg people you know from work or from school or church or your book club, whoever, it doesn't matter, whatever you need to do to just get people in front of your camera and get some practice in. Yeah, people are a little more willing to shoot out in the cold if it's free. Facts. <laughs> uh, if you have a somewhat established business, but you want to continue growing your client base without spending just like a ton of money on paid marketing, SEO is going to be a great way to do this. And while we don't claim to be SEO experts or like search engine optimization experts, mm -hmm. we do know that writing blogs that appeal to our ideal client has helped us book jobs and stay in front of our clients and has also led to like tens of thousands of dollars in weddings and portrait bookings. And the key to this is really as simple as understanding who your ideal client is and what they're interested in, as well as creating blogs that make your old clients feel awesome. So we spoke a ton about blogging in our video called Four Reasons to Start a Photography Blog Today. And so check that out if you are interested in this. And finally, our 10th way that you can effectively use your off season is to make your business official if you haven't already. If you live in the US and your photography business made or will likely make more than $600, it's lower than you think, yeah. in a single calendar year, then you need to establish your business officially with both state and federal governments. And in some places, you may also need to file for a business license with your own city, town, hamlet as well. So if you live in the US and fit into this category of, oh crap, I made $600 last year in my photography business and don't want to accidentally be committing tax fraud, then don't worry. We hosted a workshop last year, a two hour workshop, all about all the things you need to do, every single step you need to take to create a photography business that is both uh, legal and legit. So if you're sort of already running a business, but just haven't taken these steps yet, if you don't have insurance, if you don't have an LLC, all of these things, then, uh, this workshop is about making you legit in the eyes of local, state, and federal governments. And if you want to learn more about that, the video link is also up here. But that is now officially it for this week. Uh, thanks for watching, guys. We really do hope this video has given you a little bit of guidance on how you can spend these slower winter months. If you haven't already, we would really, really encourage you to join our Facebook community, Mastering the Wedding Photography Biz with Hunter and Sarah. In that group, we are building a free community of other photographers who are also building their photography businesses and helping each other out along the way. Now, next week, we are gonna jump right back in to finish up our series all about shooting in manual. And this video is gonna be about how you can use aperture, shutter speed, and ISO together to produce properly exposed images without this confusing exposure triangle. So be sure to like and subscribe so you don't miss out on that video. And if you found this video helpful, if you have any questions, or if you'd like to add anything that you feel like we missed, feel free to comment below. All right, guys, see you next week. You got a little fluffy.